Hi everyone, it's Ren here. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to my room. It's uh, Sunday today. It's the end of the weekend. I hope you guys are having a good end of the weekend. Um, I just wanted to offer some complimentary thoughts on the question of INFJ mistypes. Uh, people who mistype as INFJ or the possibility that they are mistypes. Um, you know, these thoughts are sparked by comments that were contributed to my video from two days ago on how to spot a mistyped INFJ. Uh, and so here are some thoughts that I've had following following the publication of, the, of that video and the reactions. So I would say that, first of all, I'm quite happy about the reactions. I was expecting the possibility of, uh, of more negative reactions than that, because I knew that the question of mistyping and the question of calling out people question of identity, not just for an INFJ, but for just any person, whatever. It's always a very touchy thing and, uh, you know, you're always going to rub pe some people the wrong way when you make videos like those. Uh, but I kind of feel like it's just something that I had to do because I had some thoughts to contribute on the topic. So, um, well, I mean, I think there were reactions of different kinds. Um, I would say that the first, the first the first kind of reaction, which was the the most common one, was that you know people thought that the video was useful, and I'm glad that they they found that it was useful. But I think that in some cases, maybe my messaging was slightly misinterpreted. So I would like to clarify some points here to just make sure that my my message is carried across just in the way that I had intended to. So. The question is, I think that was a point that was raised by several people. And although I do not agree with this point, I understand why it was raised. And so I think it is important that I try to clarify it. So some people were saying uh, that in, in claiming that I wanted to help people sort of have a defenses, a defensive strategy, when dealing with others who are calling them out as not being INFJ, um, in a way I was, I was furnishing them with tools to call out people in turn so that in a way I was participating from a distance and theoretically in the calling out of mistyped INFJs that I was at the very same time critiquing. Um, <clears throat> so. I mean, in a sense, I understand. I understand why people are saying this. It's it's not stupid. It's not stupid to raise this point. Um, I guess what I would what I what I would like to to qualify here is that I would not necessarily encourage that people go out and call out non INFJs all the time. Uh, absolutely not. Um, and I will return in a moment to this question of when. Should we make like when should we take a position on the type of another person and kind of go public about it? Um, I think that that's not necessarily a good thing, you know. In most cases, it's not a good thing, but not in every case. And so, by by staking this claim, I'm I'm hoping that I will be able to. Uh, reconcile, you know, harmoniously reconcile the different strands of, you know, and positions that have been expressed in reaction to the video. So, <clears throat> fundamentally, the discovery of one's type, really from my experience, and it's, it's only my experience, I don't want to extrapolate from my experience into a scientific truth, but from my experience and the experience of people that I know online, and in reality, the discovery of one's type, it is in the final instance, it is <clears throat> a personal affair. It's a voyage of self-discovery. It's useful to get feedback from other people. It's, it's, it's useful to get the insight of other people. But you, you never, like, you're never gonna find anyone who knows you better than you know yourself. The problem is that a lot of the time, even though we know ourselves better than anybody, anybody else knows us, we're also the most likely to misjudge ourselves through subjectivity. So there is a bit of a, 
a tug of war between the fact that we know ourselves better than anyone else knows us, but, but we're going to be tempted to, precisely maybe because we do know ourselves and we also therefore have great familiarity with what we don't like about ourselves, we're going to try to repress that, to focus only on the good stuff and sometimes to project stuff that is not us. So there is clearly some, some tug of war here, but it is for the individual person to resolve. And so it is generally, in a way, a, a, a voyage or a journey of self-discovery. The opinions of other people the opinions of other people are important, undoubtedly, because maybe they will help us sort of quell that subjectivity that could obscure the clarity of our findings a little bit. So that's very helpful. But we should always be a little bit careful to give too much uh, credence to what other, peop other, other people say, because what other people say is really important, but it being really important does not mean that it should supersede your own self-discovery. You see, and it's, it's, it's kind of finding the balance there that's important. So on the one hand, that means that it's important for us to deal with people, for example, uh, who, who, who see themselves as INFJ. It's important for us to respect that. Sometimes we're not necessarily going to agree with, with them. Maybe we might have other ideas. If they are engaged in this process of self-discovery, if, we do, not, if we, we do not know them too well, and yeah, you know, we've only exchanged with, with them a few times, and they don't specifically ask us for what we think, I don't think it's, not, it's a good thing to just go to them and express like this idea, because it's a questioning of identity, it can be hurtful to people, and sometimes it's done meanly, it's done as a mean to bully online, and that's kind of, it's the context of what I was trying to react against in my video on how to spot a mistyped INFJ. It's this context of people calling out gratuitously. Whether true or not, I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. Let people come to their own resolutions, okay? Even someone who is not an INFJ. There are some people who are called out by, by others as not INFJ, whereas it's the others who are not INFJ. That happens a lot, and that's what I was trying to react against because I wanted to give INFJs the tools to react to that. Um, now, the the thing is, um, <clears throat> the thing is, there's this other dimension, which is that, um, of course, some some people online. They're not just people who describe themselves as INFJ, there are people who, um, just like me, in fact, just like me, who claim to tell other people, to be able to tell other people stuff about the INFJ. And it's true that even if, and it's very much something that I would uh, embrace and, and would want to make clear, what I talk about in my videos is my opinion. I mean, let's not, let's not play naive here. The very fact that I make these videos suggests that I, I consider myself to have in a certain form of credibility. And the, f and the very existence of my videos gives me a certain kind of authority. I'm not saying this authority is legit. It just happens. And as a result, there are people who probably give importance to what I say and people who think that what I say, you know, should be taken into account in their voyage of self-discovery and what I say, but what other, you know, public INFJs say online. And I think that in the case of those people, it is important to have a discussion about whether they really are INFJs or not. Like, if there were discussions between people on some forum or anywhere else, on YouTube or, like, say, Rand Room, or Frank James, or, you know, or whoever else, about whether or not they are an INFJ, you know, <clears throat> I, under I would understand this. It's different because we have, like, Frank James, myself, and many other people, we have made the move to be, to be in the public eye. So it doesn't really make sense for us to... Uh, then complain that our INFJ-ness is questioned. But not only have we made the, the move to be in the public eye, 
Because there are some INFJs online, they make videos and they're not trying to explain to others. They're not trying to explain to other INFJs what INFJs is like necessarily. They make it more personal. And so they don't necessarily have this claim to authority. And it's not good to, to criticize them necessarily gratuitously without giving feedback. It can be hurtful. What can I say? Like there is such a thing as being mean. It, is, it exists and that's it. But someone like me, someone like Frank James, someone, you know, like the, maybe, maybe Michael Pierce, is that his name? It's different. We ought to accept being scrutinized. And I think that is healthy because we, at the end of the day, will wield more influence over other INFJs' self-discoveries than anybody who would question more personally their type. So even if it's about us encouraging other people, being positive, having a message of posit positivity, it's important to know that it comes from a credible source. So you see, so there's a distinction. <clears throat> people who post videos without a claim to authority, without purporting to be able to explain things about the INFJ, or people who are just online and who do neither of those things, they don't even post videos, it's different. For these people, I think the calling out is unwarranted. For people who have influence, I think it is warranted. And on the other hand, there is, next to this supposedly positive influence that I would claim to have, or that Frank James would claim to have, or other would claim to have, there is this negative influence, which would come from, like I said, those people who, who criticize or call out the INFJ-ness of other INFJs, they were not necessarily asking for that at all. You know, they were not asking for that. They were not opening up publicly for that. And for them, I think it could, it could be quite damaging in terms of identity, psychologically, it could be damaging. So the people who call out, those are the people, they also have some form of influence. And again, precisely for those reasons, it's important to look into whether or not there really are INFJs. And I think often the correlation is such that they are not. It's more likely for them not to be INFJs than for the people who have a positive message online to not be INFJs, which does not mean that every INFJ who, every self-proclaimed INFJ who makes the videos on YouTube is, is an INFJ. I'm not saying that's it, it is the case. I'm just saying in every instance, it's always better to have a respectful discussion, a constructive discussion, proceed by way of questions with tact, not be aggressive or accuse someone of being manipulative, just not have this bellicose approach. It doesn't really solve anything and it can be damaging to people. But really, I would say that the, the, the sort of calling out of the INFJ and the INFJ, self-proclaimed, ought to be restricted, if possible, to those who have influence. Because there's always an, there is a dimension of risk of hurting someone's process of self, like self-discovery of identity, which is a very intimate thing. So because there is this risk, like let's only apply it to those who have already made the move to influence. Because the well-being of others are at stake in there as well. And so that was the gist of my message. I hope that on the basis of this, uh, we will come to an agreement of sorts that, um, <clears throat> you know, there is there is no, like, it's not a black and white situation. I'm not saying that, like, all the ones who have a history of calling out other INFJs as not, as not INFJ are, like, villains. Not at all, of course, by no means. Um, but it depends on the on the case, you know. There are certain cases, like the cases I discussed in my previous video where I think having a way to defend oneself against such kind of calling out and being able to call out the calling out uh, can be useful. And I most definitely maintain that that's the case. Uh, so guys, in view of what I just said here, I would love to hear your feedback um, and uh, in the comments and for us to continue the conversation. Uh, in the comments, like I said, I think tomorrow or later today I'll be posting either yeah, later today or tomorrow I'll be posting a video in which I continue to answer questions that had been asked me earlier this week. Okay, have a lovely end of the day, guys. Take care. See ya.